Dumelang, Sambonani, welcome to it. Manifesto Unpacked with Bafana Mujise, proudly brought to you by a podcast party. Tune in, turn up, and take action. This year is the most important election in South Africa. Some call it our 1994. 30 years after freedom, we are here to help you to make an informed decision on the day when you go out and cast your vote. As we are heading towards this election, it's important that as young people across the country, we take that step and we cast our vote. And yes, make your vote count. Today in studio, we have the African Christian Democratic Party, the ACDP. They've been in parliament for the past 30 years. They are led by Reverend Kenneth Meshwe. The man needs no introduction. But today I have a youth voice, Prudence Mabasa. She was born and raised in Bragban. She's a chaplain, a chaplain, and also a youth minister from Assemblies of God. One thing that you must know about Prudence, she loves arts, she loves literature. Prudence, welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, good, good morning. Um, mm, mm. I'm, I'm good, thanks. And you, how are you doing? Thank you for having me. No, man, oh, it's good. <laughs> it's good to have you here to have a Christian voice yes. in a mix of politics. And as a young person, mm. most people are running to different political parties. I mean, you're into literature, you're into arts. Why politics? Why politics? Mm. Man, like, because of the fact that I'm in my community and I'm working hard in my community, mm. I saw that there was a lack of morality when it ca came to the policies that were being implemented. And I was like, where is the voice for the Christian people? Where is the voice for morality in our, in our, in our community? Mm. And that's why I got into politics. Mm. So that those policies that are good, that they should be implemented. And those that are not good and they're hindering, they mm. should be out overthrown. Definitely. I think uh, most people, when they look at the Christian party, mm. they, they may assume that, hey, it's going to be a party led by pastors <laughs> and you're all preaching in parliament. Fire! <laughs> Could that be? <laughs> what would you say? Uh, what makes uh, politics interesting within the Christian space? Well, I think if you look at the fact that... Um, from biblical terms, like mm. there's Daniel, there's there's Deborah, there are mm. many people like Joseph mm. who were leaders who actually created proper change mm. in the community, whether it was secular or it was completely um mm. like Jewish or not. Yes. But that's the reason why we're here. We're here for that those Christian principles to be part of us and mm -hmm. to say that that is what we stand for. And to have a good morality code is something that we actually think is something to inspire to and attitude to as young people, and not just young people, but also the government that is there right now. Because as you can see, the absence of morality begets corruption. You know, one thing, you don't expect you to see a young person like you, 31 years of age, <laughs> you are a, cha a chaplain, you are you know, a youth minister. Hey, umamu ruti in, 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 in some uh, terms. <laughs> what, what would you say shaped you or contributed towards you being this woman? Um, God snatched me very early. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he, he, he snatched me very early. Yes. Um, but it has to do with the fact that I am I'm, I was orphaned at a young age. Mm. So it was a thing of like, who do I look to? Who, who sees me? Mm. And the only person who saw me was God. Mm. And mm. he actually mm. just provided every single thing that I needed um, mm. in, in time and out of time. And I wanted to be the very same thing mm. to somebody else. Yes. Um, to be that voice for them, to be that helper for them, to be the person to be like, hey, you're not alone. You've got an older sister. Mm. To mm. be that person mm. in the community who fights with you. That's, that, that's amazing. Uh, Shall when you say you grew up as an orphan. Yes. And uh, we know, they say God is the lover of we widows and orphans, yes. right? He's the comfort of all. Yes. And uh, I love the part where you kind of spoke also of the part that he became the father, the keeper, the healer, the parent that you, that, that you never had. Mm -hmm. And allow me to jump on, onto this one here. Having joined today ACDP. Yes. Um, I think what you find is that your childhood obviously works a lot in terms of how you, what, what would be your political uh, orientation, if that's the mm -hmm. word to say. Um, would you say that you don't necessarily subscribe to the pop popular narrative, but rather you want to see a government that is more of God first and politics later? 
Well, I think the fact that God first, politics later, I believe it's because of the fact that politics, mm -hmm. what we call politics now is not what politics is supposed to be. Politics is about policies that govern the people. Mm. And when we talk about God is for the people, and that is the, that's what we ascribe to, and that's what I ascribe to. I believe that is something that needs to be restored. Mm. Um, mm. It's something that we as ACDP want to restore, is saying that instead of looking at our own pockets and trying to fill our own pockets, let us look at how to help these people, mm. our people, to be better and to thrive. We have, a, we have a, a youth in this country. Yes. That is slowly losing its, um, I would say, reverence to God. You know, mm -hmm. um, it's either they're polarized by the view that Christianity is a white man religion or Christianity was just used to take the land from our brothers and our fathers and sisters. And there are also those who are Christians and who are, who will be like, by prudence, politics and, and religion don't mix. How do they mix? How do they mix? As I said, I look in the... I find it weird. You look and you read the Bible mm, mm. and you hear a lot of policies that are sometimes introduced right now mm, mm. that are there in the Bible. So you're thinking about um, storage. You're mm. thinking about famine control. You're thinking about all of that. That is in the Bible. Mm, so mm. that you can't tell me that God and politics don't mix. It's you who do, doesn't mix God in politics. <laughs> okay. um, so that part I don't understand because then mm. we're not reading the same Bible. I think even David was a king. Exactly, he was a king. He was, he was a king. A king. He was David running. was a king. Mm, Joseph mm, was, mm, was the second to the Pharaoh. Pharaoh that, you, that people like ascribing to. Mm -hmm. Yes, he was... Second, mm -hmm. the second person was somebody in the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, we think about Deborah, who was a warrior and a judge. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about all these things, and it sounds so uh, far off, mm -hmm. but literally mm -hmm. in the Bible, when you look at it, it is there. Mm -hmm. So that's why I don't understand when people say that. Okay, why should I get into politics if I'm if I'm if I'm a Christian? Mm -hmm. If you do not get into politics and you're not and you you you're not you're a Christian, then who will speak for the Christian voice? Because you here saying that I'm voting, but who speaks for your values? And then you turn mm -hmm. around and say that oh my values are being out i'm um, like overseen they they, they overruled mm. nobody's actually mm. taking mm. our our values um for for people are taking our values for granted mm. but who did you vote for who did you actually put into parliament to speak for you mm. you didn't mm. put a person who actually goes and subscribes with your values and that is the reason why the danger of not having christians in politics mm. um and then in regards to the ones who believe okay fine they became apathetic to mm. religion and um christianity I believe also it's because of the fact that we allow trends to set who we are mm -hmm. and instead of actually seeking out the truth for ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we actually go and look into history, a lot of the things that we actually talk about, white man religion, not realizing that even the white man was, uh, was, was evangelized. Was a convert as well, yeah. yeah. Exactly, he mm -hmm. was not the originals. Mm -hmm. So like he was also evangelized. So you mm -hmm. can't literally come to me and say the Bible was, it wasn't even in their tongue. Mm, in the mm, beginning, mm, literally, mm. it was in Latin, and then they fought for it to be brought into Greek, into into um, German, and that. Mm, but mm. literally, if you look into the history of it, sorry, mm. if you look into the history of it, ah, guys, your 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 argument is is it's not, it's fallible. Not, it's fallible. It's not giving. Let's, let's go to this, let's go to this one. <laughs> then you have young people in this country. Yes. Uh, you have politics here, politicians in this country. Yes. And the question is. How do you use religion or include mm -hmm. religion mm -hmm. as a way, as a tool mm -hmm. to kind of heal the social ills within society? Um, how would you deal, how would you make religion a, a useful force to cap down on corruption, to cap down on immorality? Okay, so I will look into the social ills and I, I think my one part um, being chaplain is something mm. that is there. Um, so we are community chaplains. There's like many of us. Mm. We bridge the gap between the intervention of, of, of social ills when the trauma actually happens to mm -hmm. the part when actually it gets solved and um, they get the help that they need. So mm. you're seeing there, even there, Christianity plays a, a big role mm. Um, mm. because we are at the ground actually healing people from the very get jump True. so that part and then then to go into the corruption i believe the morality is important if you do mm. not stand for something you will fall for everything and mm. that is exactly mm. what we have been seeing yes. um, a lot of corrupt officials is because they don't have a moral morality code code mm. we don't just believe that i'm doing good because 
people are seeing me. Mm -hmm. I'm doing good because God sees me and there's no time to stop. Like God is always watching Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. I want to please God. So if I'm going to be pleasing God, Mm -hmm. I won't be thinking, hey, Shmara, nobody's watching. It's in this. Let Mm -hmm. me do Mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. That is not ascribed to. You understand? So So, so in that sense, because I look at the church in South Africa. Yes. And how sometimes we it's seemingly looked as if it's just an institution in the community, mm-hmm. but yet it's a very strategic institution. Yes. And the ACDP being the voice of the church in South Africa in parliament for the past 30 years. And it's good that your last in your last election you, you grew mm-hmm. uh, with numbers. And I'm wondering, do you still think that most Christians, youth and regional, do you still think people vote because they are Christian, they're going to vote for this? Do they vote according to their faith or do they vote according to issues? Okay, so prior, right, even though, yes, we grew last year, but prior to, I think what I've noticed in the last election to now Mm. is that Christians are starting to realize the importance importance mm, mm. of voting according to their values yes before covid they did not see the importance of it mm, 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 um mm. but after covid during covid and after covid they were made aware mm. and understanding I, I believe there was this one one speaker that talked about churches being closed down mm, mm, ever mm, since mm. um the current party has been in ruling mm. so now you're thinking about how the attack on the church is and how do you safeguard the Mm. majority of the of south africa because Mm -hmm. at the end of the day 80 percent is christian Mm. and if you do not do not vote for your christian values you will not be represented i think when you look at it that way and now you're going to job creation and poverty elevation yes most people tend to use say but you know people go to church because they are poor and people go to church because they are struggling, you know? Mm-hmm. And every political party right now seems to be promising jobs, yes. right? Meanwhile, in the church, it's been preached as, if, as in like, uh, your job is coming. Uh, fast for three days. Oh. <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's not necessarily, it's not always followed by action. That's what I'm trying to mm-hmm. say. Mm-hmm. And you as a party that is coming into government with a Christian background, how would you create jobs to ensure that we don't just become people who are known to just be driven by prayers and everything, but we are literally at work creating jobs? Okay, so I, I want to also just note that because of load shedding, mm. there has been literally, I think, if not 1.6 million jobs lost mm. just in the last two years. Oh, man. Can you, you you understand? Mm. And the number is still going high. Exactly. Mm. So mm. there's been job losses mm. because of that. Mm-hmm. And then if that is the case, then don't you think the biggest problem we have is cultivating the proper conducive environment for mm. Mm. businesses to thrive? Because mm-hmm. SMMEs, as well as informal <coughs> businesses, are what contribute mm. to the economy and to job creation. Mm. I believe there's a study that said 66% of businesses in the informal sector, in the in the townships, have to shut down mm-hmm. during load shedding. Meaning during the period which load shedding is happening, they do not make money. Mm-hmm. And if they do not make money, they are unable to um, create employment. Yes. Which therefore later on becomes from informal sector, becomes a formal sector because of the fact that they can grow into the private sector. Mm-hmm. But that is being um, stifled. Us as ACDP say, let us create a conducive environment for mm. those, for those, um, for for those businesses to thrive. Mm. Let us empower those people with the skill set to be able to sustain the businesses as well as build and bring them ma- and make them bigger. Those are the things that we talk about job job of job opportunities. I don't think it just needs to become from a point of we spoon feeding you and saying we're creating jobs. We're saying that the people already have jobs in them to create. Let us give them the environment for them to create it. Speaking about the enabling environment, yes. I see on a manifesto here. Yes. When you speak, you say that you're going to ensure that there is a fair and equal access to markets for local yes. owners who compete against increasing numbers of foreign owned businesses. Mm-hmm. So therefore, are you going to pursue a policy where certain industries in South Africa will be shut down for foreign nationals and preserved for local South Africans? I believe there will be a a stability. We'll look at the fact that like, okay, fine, do these industries 
best fit us. Mm. And if we do say, okay, fine, there needs to be a transition process. Mm -hmm. So therefore, if the foreign markets is more stable in so doing, mm. let them let them capacitate our own people so that they can actually build those industries themselves. Yes. Okay. Because if, if, if you look at it, most people tend to think that... Uh, like the sponsor shop economy. Mm -hmm. When you look at the sponsor shop economy, everywhere you go, mm. you don't see a lot of black people in that space. Mm -hmm. When you go into your uh, your hardwares, usually they get much higher. It's the Chinese uh, people, and uh, most young people who are business owners or upcoming business owners, mm -hmm. uh, they tend to feel like even if I try something, nothing will happen. What will the ACDP do to ensure that the young people who are entrepreneurs? need access to funding and development or mentoring how would you deliver that as a government i think also just to look at the cadre deploy deployment that would be removed because mm -hmm. of the fact that yes there is funding um you think about the these things like nyada there is funding but the funding does not reach the people who actually need it mm. um it's mostly given to the people who are supposedly subscribing to a certain party i do not want to i want i won't name names mm -hmm. um and therefore they do not actually get the provisions that they say a lot of i've i've met young people upon young people who are so like they've got innovation even mm. innovative mm. ideas mm. but but also it needs to come from obviously the mentorship away it comes okay get the the businesses that are that are already established the corporates mm. to actually do a proper um a, co a proper social social um corporate investment yes doing those things and having those courses those workshops and making it accessible to the townships mm. and to the areas in which it is it is needed doing a proper re uh, survey as to who and where can we get the skill set because the biggest mm. problem is sometimes we have people opening businesses mm -hmm. that do not serve service their community. Yes. They probably services a community that is somewhere that they wish to be and therefore they do not even give, they don't even have proper transportation to go to there to mm -hmm. deliver that service to them. So therefore looking at that arena and saying, okay, what is the best start up mm. business for you in the area that you're in and that can make a proper return. Let the corporates assist you in that. Yes. So basically you're saying rather look for what is in demand yes. than to duplicate what or what already exists in the market. Exactly. Your manifesto touches a lot and I, I'm going to go into this point here where everybody's talking about fixing ESCOM mm -hmm. and we have not really seen an actual uh, solution coming to fire, mm -hmm. uh, to fall to the foyer. You, if you remember, the minister of electricity came in and say by next year, December, the again, 16 December, there will be no more road shedding. We still have it to this day. Yes. Uh, at some point, the coal was wet uh, for some reason. So, yes. what will be different this time under your government? How will you fix ESCOM? It's been almost 20 years. People, uh, government trying to rebuild ESCOM and make it. Uh, functional, but they don't seem to be winning the fight. How would you do it? I think let's 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 cut out the middleman when it comes to our, our teachers. <laughs> let okay. us cut the middleman. Okay. Um, that will assist to making sure that we have high grade clean coal energy. Mm, um, mm. so I think they they have tried to make it this whole just um energy, and we our, I think our MP. Wayne Thring has talked about our just energy um, thing is not just mm -hmm. because of the fact that it does not actually assist us. We actually are giving coal to people who have told us to shut down our own coal, um, coal mm -hmm. power stations. Yes. So therefore making sure that our energy uses is clean and mm. finding out the proper solutions for that. Having a high, like these things of which you know, the coal was wet and everything like that. Having people who can actually give us the coal that is actually proper. Yes, those are the things that we are looking at and also other avenues of perhaps nuclear energy. Yeah, we think about nuclear energy. Yes. I mean, there was a president in, at some point in this country uh, by the name of Jacob Zuma who mm -hmm. spoke about nuclear energy. And there was a lot of, a lot of people who were saying, no, 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 we don't need nuclear. Why would the ACDP reconsider now? I believe it's because of the fact that at that time, and I believe Wentring was also one of them who actually spoke about it. Mm. Um, that time, it's because of the fact that they, hmm, I do not want to... Say it. <laughs> <laughs> we were, we, I think we were sabotaged as a country. Mm, um, mm, and mm. it started with the fact that they closed Komati Port. Mm -hmm. um, because it made no sense. Why do you close the biggest 
power station mm. um, in South Africa that actually produces the biggest amount of power. Mm. Why, why are you closing it down? If mm -hmm. you really believe it's about just energy, um, we are now losing more and creating more um, pollution because you closed it down. Mm. So I, it doesn't make sense. And the people who told us to close that down again are the ones who are our biggest coal buyers. Mm. Mm. So now, mm. was it truly something that was for us as South Africa? Mm. Or was it for our own pockets internationally? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's something <laughs> else. I won't, I won't comment either on yes. that. But one thing I can tell you is that I've seen the ACT be very vocal mm. uh, on the issue of the Bella Bill. Yes. The education sector. Yes. And on education, what you have seen as of recent, the schools are dysfunctional in a way. Uh, there's a lot of uh, drugs in schools. There's a lot of violence in schools. Learners are going to that, uh, what, going to school with knives and, uh, you know, it's, it's crazy. Even for teachers now, they it's don't even safe. know what to do anymore uh, with our children. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and also, you being a Christian organization, in the time when we were, in we were in school, we used to have assemblies and we would pray. And do you think those assemblies somehow played a role in how the 90s babies kind of, I'm not saying we were perfect, but we had that moral foundation? I do believe that the assemblies did help. Um, not only just that, I believe when we had our assemblies, we had people who were role models coming to actually teach us. You mm. know, like they would, would have people. I remember this one assembly where a person who was blind came mm. and taught us how they themselves actually participate in um, the economy. So you're thinking about mm -hmm. that this person was a banker. They were independent. Mm. Right mm. now, we don't have a lot of independent um, disability people. We do not, we don't ascribe it. And mm. the way we treat them is also because of the fact that those things are not introduced in the school. Um, a lot of the young people are just have a very bad sense of um, camaraderie mm. and, 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 and like they value things and, and, and use people mm. and it's something that is being pushed as, as a morality code in regards to the bella bill the bella bill i believe is for me it enforces an international law that has nothing to do with us as south african south african problems mm -hmm. um if we look at the fact that yes we have a drug issue yes we have uh, a behavioral issue mm. um yet there's, a, there's very little being done about the behavioral issue in the in the in the schools mm -hmm. there is little i think we have what they call um nicra is it necra nicra mm -hmm. um which could actually be an organization that assists schools with behavioral problems yet these are not things that are being introduced in our schools mm -hmm. rather you want to bring a about CSE, that will not stop people from having um, rapes happening in, in the schools. Mm. It, because it just it merely says, okay, this is your sexual orientation, go by this and act on it. Mm. But how can you act on it without the child actually understanding that no is no and yes is yes? Mm. They don't understand that at that age. They don't even understand when somebody is busy um, saying that this is my toy, that's not your toy. Mm. They don't mm. understand mm. that. And if you don't have a, have a proper morality code saying that my body is my body, your body is your body, mm. and we don't have that foreground, why are you introducing Bella Bill? Bella Bill has nothing to do with our, is solving our issues. And then you talk about transport. Um, they're trying, they're closing schools. I believe they even said there is about 88,000 schools that are, are going to be closed. Mm. And now you're thinking, okay, fine, we're closing schools. We are now going to make these kids walk far. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's not safe. South Africa is not safe for a child mm -hmm. to be walking far. Then you also have then you also have an issue of, okay, fine, when they're walking far, how do they then get there? They, they, they're doing all these tenderpreneurs. Um, they want to make sure that they get a tender of transport. But the thing is, tenderpreneurs, you know full well, they only service you for like two months. After that, they say, no, they don't want to service you. Yes. Then what happens to the kids? The kids are left in an unsafe environment. They have to wake up at four o'clock in the, in the morning, walk in the dark places mm -hmm. to go to school, get to school, it gets home um, late, and they don't even have time to spend with their families so who actually um influences the child but you know and, and i've said in no manifesto you're saying you're going to in, increase salaries of teachers yes. maybe maybe that's a way of motivating them yes. you're saying you're going to decrease the number of learners in class yes. which i support i remember when i was in school we were like 13 class and uh it was just, you know, when I went to, when I've, in my journey, I went to private schools mm -hmm. and there's like 10 of them in class, maximum 15. And you look at the issue that when you look at the schooling system right now in this country, mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really uh, speak towards grooming and building uh, responsible uh, 
skilled uh, individuals. Mm -hmm. The question is, when you increase the salaries of teachers, but meanwhile, learners are passing with 30%, <laughs> are you, how, how are you going to balance that? Honestly <laughs> speaking, are you not overlooking teaching as a calling and you're pursuing it as a source of making a living? Because at some point, you're all gonna go to school, and besides, whether I do well as a teacher or not, my salary is good, but yet, my learners are passing with 30%. Are you still gonna keep the 30% pass mark? You're going to take it to 70 or 50? No, 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 no. 30% is, is a fail, guys. Let's mm, be honest. Mm. 30% is a fail. <laughs> um, I, I think even, even the uh, universities I don't... I <laughs> ow, 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 ow. Okay. Um, I, 30% is a fail, and it's not just a fail to us. It's a fail to the teachers themselves who mm. are teaching the people. Um, because if you can't be saying that this is this is what I'm... Let's say you, you are doing a product, and it only passes 30% of the benchmark. Mm. Is that a product that you can uh, um, release into the industry? Mm. No. Mm. So therefore, your benchmark, if you're dropping your benchmark, it means that you are no longer servicing what you yourself have said that you will do. So then we're saying, okay, fine, incentivize the, mm. the, the, the education center. Um, you think about when you have private... Private nurses versus um, public nurses. Mm. Mm. Private nurses get more paid more. Mm. 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 And the service that you get in a private hospital... Very good. Exactly. Very good. So in exactly with the same thing with the teachers. If you give them the amount of money incentivizing, saying that, okay, fine, we're giving you the money, you have no excuse. Do okay. your job. So I, then the 30% will go down, like literally. We'll, we'll put it back at 50 plus. Mm -hmm. We can't have 30%. We say let, let this teach, and plus also the curriculum. Mm -hmm. Let the curriculum be something that the kids can actually use for the future. Mm -hmm. Because at, right now we're talking about the 4IR, now we're actually at, at, at the 5th. Um, so you're thinking about the fact that are we actually creating these kids to get jobs in mm -hmm. the future or for past jobs that are no longer relevant to our society. Mm -hmm. So those mm -hmm. are the things that we need to now look at. Okay, fine. This curriculum does not work. They do not know how to just pass maths. The maths teachers also don't know how to pass maths. So mm -hmm. how do we then work on that? How do we then get that done? Let mm -hmm. the teacher colleges come back because honestly, they were more helpful. Mm -hmm. Yes. And here's the thing, uh, Prudence. Yes. You decrease the number of learners in class, mm -hmm. but the townships are literally squashed, right? The rural areas are squashed. Mm -hmm. If you go to a rural area, you find that there is two high schools for, for the whole village. Mm -hmm. In the township, you find that there is three high schools for the whole township. Mm -hmm. How are you going to balance registration mm -hmm. and how are you going to balance numbers if all that they have is those four schools in the townships and they are saying you want 10 in one class. Is it realistic? It is not realistic. And that's where we also need to support um, homeschooling. Mm. Um, but And also in supporting homeschooling, we do need to also just support the private schools as well that mm. could open mm. up in the, in the townships that are affordable. Mm. Um, mm. I believe we, should, we need to look and engage into ways of the, the, that happening. Mm. Um, the thing is, you're saying, okay, fine, there's four schools. And now they're thinking of canceling just two. Mm. And then there's only going to be two. Mm. You understand mm. that, like, literally it's not working. It's not going to balance. So, yes, mm. if we're going to talk about, yes, maybe decreasing the time, we are looking at the fact, okay, fine, let us open more schools. Mm -hmm. Let us also just maintain the schools that we already have because mm. some of these schools are actually maintainable it's just that they don't even have the workable space i believe in khelekstal there was a time where they even had an injury because of the fact that there was no the, the, the classes were not ma maintained mm. so thinking about that that now a classroom is mm. no longer functional because of the lack of maintenance looking at that last point on education yes Speak to the young people who mm. didn't finish metric, mm -hmm. who didn't uh, manage to go to varsity, and they are, they are, they are assumed mm -hmm. to be unemployable because they have no metric, uh, they have no skill base. How will you, as the ACDP government, open up a space for them to thrive as well, regardless of their disadvantages? I believe skills development is important. 
Um, so therefore, we, we believe that skills development is po- important and mm. that, that is something that is in our manifesto. Yes. That we push the fact that, okay, fine, let us have skills schools. Mm. Schools that are literally vocational schools that actually teach a certain a vocational skill. Mm. Um, we have the TVETs, but like, let us be more specific. Let us mm. be specific to what is needed right now. Sure. Um, what is the surplus is the, the surplus industries, the industries that we actually can flood with with with, with people who can work. Yes. Um, and capacitate them. Mm. Those are the because you will even find that they can be self-employed. Mm. They don't need mm. to be actually hired. Yes. In that regard. Thank you for that great answer. I mean, you, you covered it very well to say mm. we do need to kind of uh, improve our TVET colleges, yes. improve those uh, skill-based institutions mm-hmm. uh, where even whether he's grade 9 or grade 10, you'll be able to get access. Yes. One other issue in this country is crime and justice. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if it was your party or somebody else who once said must bring back death penalty or some sort. <laughs> And there was also, <laughs> it was you. Oh, no, it's not you. Okay. And there's a part where you also said you need to ensure that there is no bail for those who are charged with rape, uh, uh, robbery, hijacking, murder. Looking at the South African issues right now, we are called a safe haven for criminals and the syndicates. And you're looking at human trafficking, you're looking at all of these things. What do you think the current administration is not getting right? Because we have all these polices, we have all this mapanyaza, you know, we have security vans all over towns and cities. What are we getting? What are we not? What are they not? Are they not getting right to ensure that there is safety and and you know safety in our communities? Okay, so the case, the case conviction rate. It's mm. very far between. Okay. So you find that, okay, fine, even if I can open a case, the person might not get convicted. Okay. The person might not even face the judge mm. Mm. because of corruption. Yes. So if we can solve the corruption part in that re- regard, um, but also with the forensics, let us capacitate SAPs. Let us let SAPs have more than just the, the people that they're having now because I feel like right now they are, they are understaffed and we are a lot of people. Guys. South Africa has There's a, a huge mm-hmm. population where you, um, having worked with SAPs, um, there are times where we have to be called out to a scene and there's no van. Mm, so mm, you understand mm. if we can capacitate them and say that, okay, fine, let us capacitate them, have the, mm-hmm. have have money go to that instead of people's pockets. Mm-hmm. Let actually the community benefit from the, the taxes that are being paid. Mm. That would assist. And let NPA be capacitated too because of the fact that if people are stealing from the state, they should pay back the money. In any other case, if somebody is committing fraud, mm. your, your whole... Assets are repossessed until you pay everything back. Mm, mm, but mm, why mm. is it not the same with politicians? Mm. Why is it not the same with politicians? A crime is a crime is a crime, regardless of who does it. So would you support some um, a corruption court that deals yes. directly with uh, political okay, government corruption yes. and persecute them? Because you are right, we have... Um, the, the the state capture report mm-hmm. that listed leaders that today have been promoted and some are even uh, in the upcoming list to parliament and these are the people who are implicated uh, into the Zondo Commission. Mm-hmm. So in South Africa, most people end up saying, "But in SA, if you are rich, you are beyond the law. If you are poor, the law is coming for you." So the question again would be, how will you, as a Christian party, help or remedy? the high rate crime, okay, the high rates of crime that we see in this country. Are you going to start maybe doing some teachings about why is, uh, sin, it's a sin <laughs> to steal? <laughs> it's a sin. Where? Where? Are you no. going to preach? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, there's a place to preach and there's a place to do. Um, mm, so mm. one, obviously, especially with the... I think enforcing the punishment of, of, of criminals. I believe that uh, I, I, our presidents like saying that the other parties shy away from saying that we should punish criminals. Mm. And I believe we should. Um, as a person who has literally survived rape, I know full well that literally you don't get the person to get to court. Mm. That is mm. the mm. longest. I believe right now we've got an ETA of nine years mm. for every rape case. Mm-hmm. And we have mm-hmm. how many rapes in a in a sec in a in a day? I've been one hundred and fifty. Yes. Sure. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And if mm-hmm. every one hundred that person becomes a serial rapist because you have not captured them, mm-hmm. 
Mm. That person is mm. not in jail. He continues to do so. So let us have punishment. And there shouldn't be bail for people who do things like murder, mm -hmm. who have been caught for murder, who have been caught for, for rape. Mm. There shouldn't mm. be bail for those people. Mm -hmm. And those penalties need to be severe. Let them feel the fact that, hey, if I do this, mm. I go to jail. Wow. And it is is one of those moments in South Africa where you you question the rule of law. Yes. How effective is it? Mm -hmm. We have illegal immigration in this country mm -hmm. that has not been dealt with as we speak. Mm -hmm. uh, we still have issues with corruption. Mm -hmm. We still have issues with uh, what you call bribes, mm -hmm. where everything you can just afford it and you over the the law uh, becomes for sale. The question is. Looking at the current illegal immigration policy, do you support deportation of illegal immigrants? Yes. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is obviously because the, we believe that we need to strengthen the borders as is. Mm. Most of the people who actually get in here is not that they got in there by themselves. There's mm -hmm. a corrupt official at the, uh, the border gate who allowed them in. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, so yes. if you look at the fact that most of our issues mm. stem from people with a lack of a morality code mm -hmm. who do not feel that the pay that they're getting is sufficient enough mm -hmm. and therefore decide to, what do they call it? Um, <coughs> what do they call when you, when you get... Sad hustle. They side hustle. <laughs> 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 they side hustle at the expense of the country. Okay. Um, so if we can look at that and have severe penalties for that as well, mm -hmm. that also the person who's being bribed at the border gate, mm -hmm. that they sh too should be held liable mm. for the, the immigration system. Somebody said, you know, I, I would love to be part in combating crime in mm -hmm. my community. Yes. The problem is that whenever somebody speaks up, they disappear. And whenever somebody uh, tend to in uh, again protest mm -hmm. they are scapegoated or they are black you no know, they're mm -hmm. singled out mm -hmm. and i see no manifesto here you speak about encouraging whistleblower protection mm -hmm. to ensure that i mean there's a lady uh, in johannesburg i yes. forgot her name who was killed for speaking out during the zondo commission True. so if you're going to encourage whistleblowers don't you think you're putting people's lives in order, shouldn't the police enforcement do their work, investigate, and to actually ask people to snitch or to speak up, meanwhile their lives might be in danger? Whose community is it? My community. Who's supposed to speak up against what's wrong in your community? As I'm saying to you, but then if I'm going to speak up and I'm putting my life and my family in danger, mm -hmm. right, I can speak up, it's fine. Yes. But now there's a fear, or a, I will do it nicely or better if I know that I'm protected. That is where the, the protection comes in, mm, the whistleblower mm. com uh, protection. And I do believe it needs to be very sensitive. Yes. Um, it needs to be, um, we need to know who to go to, and we need to know who to trust as whistleblowers. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, there, is, there is a need um, mm. for people to actually witness crime and to actually say that they see that crime is happening and to actually speak up against it. So yes, we do definitely say vehemently, okay, fine. You as a whistleblower need to be protected by us as the state because your whistleblowing saves us money as the state. Mm. As the government, you get saved. Your money gets saved by catching somebody in the act mm -hmm. because it's a crime. Yes. You understand? So mm -hmm. if that is the case, then like even with the corruption situation, if that person gets caught, they no longer steal from the state. They need to... So the person who's actually whistleblowing should be protected by us, the state. But... You think about Hawks. Hawks is a wonderful, I love mm, their mm. system when it comes to their whistleblowers. Mm -hmm. You never even hear who actually did it. Mm, you mm, will mm. never hear True. who actually told them where a human trafficking rink was. Mm, you will mm. not hear about it. Why? Because they are that stealthy mm, and mm, they, are, they protect their own. But yes, I believe that the fact that, the, that they are corrupt SAPS officials is causing the fact that those, those people who are put into witness protection mm. get caught out and then they, they get shot down. But if we were doing our work as a state and we're saying, okay, us as ACDP want to pursue that, that must be done and should be done correct, correctly according to the law mm -hmm. so that the people can actually be feel safe to speak up against crime. 
the the youth of this country yes. they are dealing with gender based violence yes. and most young people are scared to speak up mm-hmm. either male or female yes and you find that in most cases especially men when they speak up mm-hmm. or oh, as youth they tend to feel like hey they're going to judge me yeah. there's a stigma behind it when a woman speaks up as of recent you've also seen that some are using this gbv uh, as a scapegoat maybe to as a beta response to their exes mm. or maybe because they don't I, I don't I'm looking for reasons mm. uh, but then the question would be how will the acdp government help those who are dealing with gbv who can speak out the vulnerable the young people who are living in these relationships on day to day basis strengthen the policies that are there that are to to protect them so if you think about um i think earlier on we talked about chapter 9 when it comes to the corruption um, mm. co- the co- anti corruption council but now we're actually now talking about the fact that okay fine there are vfrs there are neighborhood watches there are gbv b- brigades mm. that are supposed to be there in every single communi- community and in every single police station a police mm. a police person cannot interview a person who is in who says that they come to um register a gbv case without a volunteer there mm, and yeah. that is in the policies <coughs> that uh, that govern them mm-hmm. so making sure that those things are implemented at grassroots level mm. at every single police station that is literally what we as acdp will do mm-hmm. um and in regards to I think you kind of hinted it to it mm-hmm. um whether if somebody comes and says something is GBV when it's not actually GBV mm-hmm. or comes and gives a false claim our, our I, I think our, our our president said it at the manifesto launch mm-hmm. at the manifesto launch that literally um they are pushing they're saying that if you come with a false claim to somebody mm-hmm. and it mm-hmm. is found mm-hmm. out that it's false you will get the same amount of jail time that they that person was supposed to get if mm-hmm. for for the false claim i think that that balance it because i think that should be the way forward in terms of ensuring that everyone can speak up and everybody has equal access uh, to crime and justice in this country and uh, as as i see here you are literally looking at uh, deploying mm-hmm. soldiers uh, to enforce law and order mm-hmm. um don't you think that's bit drastic in a way we have already have policing that is way mpanyaza pa mpanyazas we have uh, the hawks we have the special units uh, you have uh, maberetes why would you need the soldiers among civilians i believe it's in regards to protect our borders mm-hmm. so that we need soldiers you need soldiers for mm-hmm. and the reason why we need soldiers for that is one also to get them to to exercise nyana um, <laughs> <laughs> I said I said I'm going to do anything. I I we don't have any words yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um but other than that is because of the fact that the they can hold the saps accountable. Uh, yes. And we need that accountability partner. Mm, mm, because mm. saps sometimes feels like they run the they run the country. Yes. Whereas they also public servants. True. They serving the community. Mm-hmm. and they need somebody to be accountable to in regards to their morality code too oh you are a lady who's into arts yes literature yes. young people in this country mm-hmm. dreamers in their numbers yes the talent that you have seen growing up some of them they end up just doing a, a, a work again a 9 to 5 because there was no support true uh soccer players you mm-hmm. can name them all who used to be great in the township or in school mm-hmm. but just they're not doing anything with that talent anymore because there's no support the the state is not responsive the arts sports and culture is not active the ministry is not active in communities True. under the acdp government how would you groom this talent and ensure that these young people have the necessary support and even resources to reach their full potential. I believe the the part of arts is because of the fact that like they have they have kind of underrated the marketability of arts. Mm. So now if you look at what in your arts and what in your platform can be made into a business. Mm. And that is what we want to educate people into. Mm-hmm. Saying that your art 
is not just entertainment. Mm. Your art is an opportunity to make business. Sure. You understand? So if we can capacitate people in that regard, you'll find that they too can also create jobs. Mm -hmm. So you'll find that even, yes, we support you to make your art form, make your, um, make your soccer part mm -hmm. a business. Mm -hmm. So that you yourself can also just broaden and incapacitate other people to go abroad. But Prudence, I'm speaking about someone who does not have support structure. I yes. want to be on radio. There is no local community radio station. Mm -hmm. uh, I want to be on radio. There is no mentor who can tell me, if I want to speak this way, speak like mm -hmm. that. I'm talking about that support. Yes. Uh, in I mean, once the you government. go into, yes, once you have groomed me, mm -hmm. then you can speak about the profitability of the talent. Mm -hmm. But let's not talk about the profit now. Let's talk about grooming it and ensuring that they reach their full potential. How does the state does that? I've seen a lot of people, I've seen the current government building community centers which end up becoming a place for funerals in the community, and they just end up becoming places for bashes and all of that. But we have not really seen an active... Utilization of arts. Yes. Which is true. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is why I'm going back to the whole business and the profitability. Because mm -hmm. I believe, as an artist, you need to be able to stand on your own mm. from the very beginning. Mm. And... If you are unable to stand on your own from the very beginning, mm. it's going to be hard for you to sustain your work. You'll get tired. Mm -hmm. um, and not just tired, you'll get discouraged. So therefore, that's a reason why I believe, I think we were at some sort of arts piece, and they said that we need to look at the collaborative workspaces of art, that my art is different to yours, but how can we collaborate in order for us to go and build? Um, having the workshops that are there at ground level, mm -hmm. having the, the school workshops that are there at ground level, mm -hmm. saying that, okay, fine, at schools, why are we not having radios at high schools? Mm, mm, mm. Why don't we have that? Mm. I believe, even in my time, I think in my primary school, we had a newspaper. Mm -hmm. There you cultivate, new, you, you cultivate journalists. Journalists, yes, yes, yes. I don't have a journalist thing, but I can do journalism. Why? Mm -hmm. Because it was cultivated at a young age. Mm, so mm, you're thinking mm. about that. How do you then capacitate even the schools to not just give a skill that they know and they see, Mm -hmm. but one that can actually build this person to the future that they can be in. Do you think it would be strategic to have SABC, some, uh, some uh, record labels, all these industries mm. coming together with the state and to groom talent and run programs in communities through municipalities and MMCs to the ground? Don't you think that might work? They have done such an initiative once upon a time. Once upon a once time. Once upon a time. <laughs> yes. And I believe the reason why it didn't work is because of corruption. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody stole the money. Somebody and stole the money. <laughs> um, even, I believe, even with the Disky, Disky mm. Challenge. Yes, yes. That used to be something, that I think it still is. It's just that now it doesn't reach every single community. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that was something that Multi-Choice did very well. Mm, mm. Um, so... Corruption, guys. It's it's what is uh, yeah, harming this. Exactly. And I believe there is a private sector and a public sector um, collaboration that is needed. Mm -hmm. um, but when you're looking at it, I do believe that it needs to be cultivated from primary schools and from um, ECDs. Because I kid you not, once you get those kids doing it, mm -hmm. I remember when I was in primary school, KTV used to come and, be, and, and, and help us out with that mm. and teach us how to be presenters. That. We, we need those. You need that. You know, to, to spark their light, to spark their light into a child's mind and, you know, to say that you can become this. Yes. And here is this person. If you grow, if you do well, mm. you can go that far. I want to ask you this question because mm. we are a Christian party mm. in South Africa. Mm -hmm. And to those who are not Christian, why should they vote for you? Morality. Mm -hmm. We stick by our morals. So we believe that Christianity advises how we do things, mm. not that we are Christianizing South Africa. I think there's a huge thing where they feel like we're going to be like the Vatican and we're the Christian state that says mm. everybody who is India needs to be Christian. And have as a bishop. You know, mm. no, mm. no, no. We, we, we don't believe in that. We mm. believe that in the freedom of religion. Um, and we believe in the sanctity of the family values. Mm. Um, mm. So that is what we ascribe to. And that 
that. And that's the reason why, even if you're not Christian, knowing mm. full well that the Christian values are what guide us, mm. saying that I have, we are people of integrity. Yes, we've heard your cry. Yes, we've heard that you are not getting service on time, that you are not getting the service delivery that you have you have paid for. Mm. Yes, we've heard that you don't see the order in in in, in justice and mm. all that. That we've seen that you feel unsafe in your home. Mm. Yes, that. We are here to, to, to make sure that we hold the government accountable, hold mm. ourselves accountable to the standard that the Lord expects from us. So in a way you're saying, even if you're not a Christian, yes. you can still vote for the ACDP yes. on common values mm -hmm. of that, the sanctity of life and all of that. Mm -hmm. Would you, coming into power, scrap a portion of the list? It is something that we would look mm -hmm. into because of the very fact um guys it is life mm, mm, mm. um that is somebody's life mm. if you do not want to if you don't want it give it to somebody else mm, um mm, adoption mm. is an option yes. and i feel like that that is not being and i, I love the way marisa actually puts it when we're talking about the bella bill she says that the the state has looked at um girls like kettle like cattle Mm, uh, mm. meaning that they can just make them have an abortion, clean you up, and then you go back to school. Mm, mm. Forgetting that there's a lot of trauma that is attached to this, that this is a person, mm, and mm. that person has just lost a life. Mm, 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 there's a mm. grieving process that needs to happen. Mm. You understand? So mm -hmm. that needs to be brought back because, as we said, we are now looking at people as cattle. We are now using people and valuing things. Mm. So I'm valuing mm. my time that you are making me wait until next year to teach you again, mm. rather mm. than mm. actually saying, okay, fine, let me walk with you in this mm -hmm. so that you can, yes, give the birth to the child that is there. Mm. Yes, maybe um, give it up for adoption, but then you also build up as a person. But we don't want that. Amongst the young people, yes, we have uh, what they call um, okay. Amongst the young people, you have what we call uh, what do you call it? There's a word uh, LGBTQ. Yes, right. I want to say the whole thing, but that I might get lost at the end, <laughs> right? Uh, the LGBTQ community is very, very, very uh, is growing amongst the youth. Mm -hmm. uh, girls are becoming lesbians. Boys are becoming gays. Uh, some are, are, are bio, ACDP government, a Christian party in, in, in power, would you support same-sex marriage? Would you still keep the same-sex marriage going or would you still want to pursue that marriage must only be kept for men and women? Okay, so if you look at where they're talking about, um, they're talking about same-sex, I think right now it's under the... Um, the customary law, mm -hmm. um, so it is under the yeah the civil. It's not in the First Amendment, yes. um, and the reason why it's not in the First Amendment is because of the fact that why marriage itself was created and why marriage was instructed as a law mm. was between husband and wife and for the children mm. to be known that they are of that husband and that and wife. And nuclear family. Exactly. Mm. Mm. So that was literally the reason why that was created. So now to change that is to no longer ascribe for the word and where it comes from as marriage. Then it is something else. Mm. Then we are saying, then call it something else. Don't call it marriage because mm. it mm. is not... Falling under the, the very, context. Yes, the context in which it was brought. Okay. Um, we don't believe in... In making sin, mm -hmm. making sin like abolished, because if you think about the fact that okay we criminalizing um, that, then you're thinking okay you have to criminalize adultery, you have to criminalize fornication. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things mm -hmm. that you have to criminalize. <laughs> like no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we believe you. You have your choice. You have the decision you want to do, and if you want to live that life, that is up to you. Mm. As us as Christians, probably we, we're probably not going to, but you can do that. Mm. But we're not going. Let's not call it marriage. Let mm -hmm. us not call it the First Amendment marriage. Mm -hmm. Let us call it call it what it is. Like mm -hmm. shape your own definition as you shaped it with the different genders. Mm -hmm. Shape a different definition for that, but don't call it marriage because that is not what it is. Okay, I'm going to wrap it up with this question. Every single time. I give all parties two minutes yes. to actually tell us, as South Africans, why should I vote as a young person? Why should I vote for the ACDP in May? You go. We have heard your cry. Mm. We see you. Mm. We know you. 
Mm. We have seen you from time and time again. Yes. We say that, yes, your SOS has been heard by the ACDP. We are offering it's time for service. It's time for order. It's time for safety. Mm. It's time for you to feel safe in your own nation. So therefore vote for, for, for ACDP. Mm. It's time for you to feel the order and in society. Mm. It's time for you to vote for the ACDP. It's time for you to get the service that you yourself have been taxed for. Mm. It's mm. time for you to vote for the ACDP. Mm. You heard her. Prudence Mabasa. Did she get your vote? As a Christian, are you more motivated to vote for the ACDP once again in the upcoming election. This was Manifesto Unpacked. I am Bafana Mudise, proudly brought to you by a podcast party. Tune in, turn up, take action. See you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>